with the NHL draft right around the corner now. Today, we'll be taking a look at the best Carolina Hurricanes draft picks in their franchise history, all in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And this episode is brought to you by the lovely folks over at FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Andrew Schnitker. How are you doing on this lovely Thursday afternoon, Andrew? I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to this uh, draft countdown. This is a fun exercise, and I'm uh, hearing your FanDuel read gets me excited, too, because it won't be too terribly long before people in North Carolina can actually use FanDuel to place their bets. Yes, I know. It's going to be fun. I saw where Tom Dundon had made some comments on it uh, either last night or this morning, and we'll be talking about that later on in the week. But today, it is time to talk about the Best Carolina Hurricanes draft picks. Now, we do want to preface this with, you know, we're not going to uh, load it up with, uh, you know, guys that, you know, on the current roster, you know, uh, because uh, a lot of the guys on the current roster, you know, they have, uh, you know, drafted well. uh, And it could be really easy, you know, to just be like, oh, and we are going to mention these guys, of course. Uh, But, you know, we did try to look at, the entirety of the hurricane's history not just you know within the past you know seven years or so you know so diving on into this andrew i want to i want you uh to kick us off with this you want me to start and i mean i know we're doing like a top five right here do you want me to start at number five or number one uh let's start it uh let's start at number five okay so for me, and I'll just start, I'll, I'll throw in some honorable mentions as well of guys I had like Cam Ward, Justin Falk, Jeff Skinner, and then Andre Svechnikov and Martin Natchez, two recent picks who obviously have the chance to keep climbing up the ladder. Um, my number five is Brett Pesci. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking at value here. The Hurricanes took Brett Pesci with the 66th overall pick, third rounder in 2013. Jim Rutherford's last draft and probably one of Jim Rutherford's best draft picks. I mean, you look at the value of what the Hurricanes got in Brett Pesci, a lockdown, um, you know, reliable shutdown top four defenseman with some um, underrated offensive upside. If you look at it, the past um, just in Hurricanes history, just Hurricanes, not including the Whalers, he's actually third among defensemen with 185 points. You just look at what he's meant to this team in terms of anchoring that second pairing, playing on the penalty kill, being such a big part in the Hurricanes' return to relevancy in this playoff streak. I just think getting a defenseman, um, you know, a player at such a valuable position like that in the third round in the 60s, is just an insanely valuable pick. And, I, you know, I give major kudos to – Jim Rutherford and the hurricane scouting staff at the time for, you know, finding and identifying Brett Pesci as, as a player who could develop into what he has. Yeah. Uh, I a hundred percent agree with you there on Brett Pesci. I have him as my number five as well. Just, you know, just one of those guys that just kind of the scouting report was done right. And he has panned out in just about every way the hurricanes could want him to. And, you know, we've talked about him a lot as of late, you know, with uh, contract extension uh, coming up and really wanting him to stay here, you know, uh, you know, we'll, and we'll see what happens. But you you hit the nail on the head with all of that. Uh, and since we had the same number five, I'll just you know, dive straight into my honorable mentions and then we'll go into number four uh, with my honorable mentions. 
Uh, I have Justin Falk. He was, you know, um, I wouldn't say polarizing, um, but he was he was a scapegoat. He was one of the worst yes. things you can be, which is one of the best players on a bad team. But yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I agree with you, especially when you look at where they found him in the second round. He was really good for the Hurricanes. Yeah, he was really good. He was a bright spot for the team in some really dark days for them. And I am glad you know, he did uh, have that one playoff run uh, with them back in 2019. That was great for him yeah obviously you know he moved on to st louis uh but you know he you know he stuck around you know and he did all he could for the team he was again like you said the scapegoat a lot uh and you know he did have one of my favorite hurricanes playoff goals in that second round series against the islanders that was fantastic uh and i I was in there that you're talking about the breakaway out of the box yes. one, right? I, I yeah. was in there that night. I have never, and unless they win the Stanley Cup on home ice, not sure I will ever because I wasn't there in 2006. Hear that building louder than it was when Justin Falk scored that goal. Yeah, it, it was absolutely crazy. Uh, then I also have Andre Sveshnikov. He was one that I almost put at number five uh, instead of Brett Pesci. Um, and he easily could be. Uh, and I think, you know, he has potential to be, you know, number one uh, one day. He, he absolutely does. And just because I have him as an honorable mention is no slight against him. And he just honestly just comes down to his age. He just hasn't played as long as some of these other guys, you know, uh, and, and that's it. You know, I think he totally can be the Hurricanes best draft pick ever one day. I really, really do. He has all the tools there. Uh, to do it and i think he will one day uh next honorable mention actually my last honorable mention is eric cole he was one that i almost put in the top five um but yeah he's got you know that when you go back to the value stuff uh you know the hurricanes have drafted him back in 98 i believe in the second round uh i believe it was and he just did you know, he was vital on that um, BBC line with uh, Bates Battaglia and Rod Brandon Moore back in the day. And, you know, he, he gave it all for the Hurricanes. He did. Uh, you know, he was a big part of them, you know, going to the cup final uh, back in 02, winning it in 06. And, you know, he played over 500 games, you know, for the Hurricanes. And he was a really key cog in, in their wheel. Uh, back in the day, uh, you know, a, a guy that they could always rely on. Uh, and, you know, and it's also nice to see that, you know, he's still around too. You know, he lives here. Uh, you know, you can go to Sports and Social down in Cary, run into him at a watch party. And I love that, you know, he's still involved with the Hurricanes in some capacity as well as kind of an ambassador for the organization as well. But, you know, he was a guy did everything he could for the team back in his day. Uh, But Andrew, what was your number four all time draft pick? So it's actually really funny that you just went through all that. Uh, Eric Cole is my number four. (laughs) Um, We're we're looking at value again here. He was actually a third round pick in in 1998, number 71 overall pick. Yeah. You look at how good he was, um, you know, power winger, goal scoring winger for the hurricanes. Uh, again, you look at the Hurricanes' stats since relocation. He is sixth in points with 363 and sixth in goals also with 168. You you mentioned already how important he was to that 2002 team, scored some big goals. I think he might – I think he scored maybe the tying goal in the Molson Miracle that uh, game four at Montreal in 2002. He scored one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that key cog on that BBC line. And then in 2006, when they won the Stanley cup was having an incredible year on the top line with Eric Stahl on pace for like 40 some goals, I think got his neck broken by Brooks Orpik and then ended up being able to come back for game six and seven of the Stanley cup final against the Edmonton Oilers. Everybody always talked about how, much of an emotional lift that team that gave that team. He was briefly traded away 
and then brought back, um, ended up again being a key cog for the 2009 team that went mm-hmm. to the Eastern Conference Final. His in his last year for the Hurricanes, uh, 2010-11, that was the year that was Jeff Skinner's rookie year. Uh, which one of the things that people actually talked about a lot that year, I remember, was him kind of being a mentor for Skinner. He scored some big goals that year. The Hurricanes barely missed the playoffs. But, yeah, I mean, you look, the Hurricanes got one of their best forwards, one of their best scorers all time who, like you said, played over 500 games for them in the third round. I mean, you don't don't get much more valuable than that. You do, and we'll get there. But, um, but yeah. The, I, th- I think Eric Cole's got to be in there for me. I, I wanted to touch on Andrei Svechnikov as well because you mentioned him because I had him as an honorable mention too. Um, and it, it's the same as you for me. I think he has all the potential, and we've seen the flashes of it to be one of these top guys. But he just, for me, as a number two overall pick, he hasn't quite gotten there where you want him to be yet to that consistent 30, 40 goal scorer. So that that's why he's not in my top five. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, he has all the tools to do it, and he's 23 years old. He's got plenty of time left, uh, so that'll just be one we continue to watch as the years go on. I know we'll be talking about another number two overall pick later, uh, and we will do that right after this quick break, folks. Now, as Andrew said earlier, uh, the state of North Carolina has legalized sports betting. And before you know it, you'll be able to use FanDuel Sportsbook here. So make your way over to FanDuel because new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win a uh, baseball season, is in full swing now. You see me you know, wearing a Detroit Tiger shirt. I, I know. And I think Andrew is wearing a Kansas City Royal shirt. I'm not sure, but you guys know unfortunately we are you know big baseball fans here. And you can go bet on your favorite baseball team if you're in a place that you can. And there's no better place to bet on all the action than America's number one force sports book visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars that's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel official sports betting partner of the nba now uh looking at our number three or no we have to get to my number four excuse me uh we're skipping ahead now my number four is i believe was one of your honorable mentions, yes, it was, and that is Cam Ward. Uh, and yeah, you know, he is the Hurricanes' all time best goalie. Uh, and yeah, you know, he was, you know, obviously vital in their success, uh, in 2006, uh, winning the Stanley Cup, of course, he won the Conn Smythe Trophy, uh, you know, and 2009 of them getting back to the conference final. Uh, and I, I've talked a lot about Cam over the years of doing this show. I've been a big Cam Ward defender. Uh, and, you know, at, at the time when they drafted him, they, they knew what they needed. Uh, you know, they're coming off of the Stanley Cup final loss to Detroit. And they went out and drafted a goalie, you know, uh, gave him you know, time to continue to develop. And you know, then he got called up and he was their franchise goalie. And they really haven't found a true replacement of franchise goalie, uh, you know, that can that you can see, you know, can carry this team, you know, for years to come since he left for Chicago. And and I said many times in the past, uh, you know, I hate the management at, at the time, you know, when he was playing because of him having to play so much play and not have uh, one, a good team out in front of him and, and, you know, him having to stand on his head uh, and then never having, you know, good, uh, a good backup, especially in the later years of his tenure uh, when his body was just starting to give out and he just couldn't keep up. Uh, and it really would have been nice to see, you know, what could have been had he had, you know, 
support there, how much longer his prime could have lasted. And, you know, he's obviously in the Hurricanes Hall of Fame for a reason. You know, look at everything he did for him. You know, again, he's the Hurricanes all time. You know, he basically has every record a goalie can have for the Hurricanes. Uh, and his name is up in the rafters for a reason. He did everything he could for the Hurricanes. And, you know, he's one of my all time favorite Hurricanes. So, of course, he was going to be here. So, and he also had some of the coolest goalie masks ever. The pirate one, all time. But, you know, uh, now get, getting into our number threes, uh, Andrew, what was your number three? Uh, draft pick for the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, I was just want to say I agree with everything you just said about Cam Ward. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely underappreciated for everything he brought. He didn't make my top five just because of the value thing. He was a first round pick. Yeah. However, my number three, you know, there's no draft value there, but sometimes a guy just lives up to his draft spot and still is a great draft pick. And that's me at number three. I'm going with Eric Stahl, the number two overall pick in the 2003 draft um i mean you look at him over the years with the hurricanes there's really no denying leader in goals with 322 leader in points with 775 um you know you look at him in 20506 had 100 points in the regular season hurricanes leading scorer in the playoffs as they won the stanley cup scored some huge goals in that 2009 run um You know, another guy who got a lot of flack, a lot of scapegoating as the best player on a bad team, especially in later years when the Hurricanes simply struggled to put good teams and talent around him, you know, when he was captain and they, you know, they didn't make the playoffs with him as captain. He certainly bears some responsibility to that, but not nearly as much as some people would probably try to tell you. I mean, again, I, I just think you look at the Hurricanes in team history, Eric Stahl is still, to me, they're the best player in Hurricanes history. We're, we're getting to a point where maybe that's not true. Um, although, I don't know, so regular season stats-wise, Sebastian Ajo's still got a, a good ways to go. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, you look at Eric, he pretty much was everything you could want for a number two overall pick. Yeah, uh, he's my number three as well. Played 900 in nine games for the Hurricanes, just shy, just shy of a thousand games played. And yeah, yeah, he was uh, in the same boat as like Justin Falk, in the same boat as Cam Ward, uh, just yeah, getting scapegoated for stuff. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you look at his uh, overall numbers uh, towards you know, the end, yeah, you were seeing them start to drop off. So I understand, and then yeah, he wanted to go as well. So I understand, yeah, them moving on. Uh, but yeah, you know, he he still owns uh, got a whole bunch of records for the Hurricanes and ones that will uh, take a while to get broken. And yeah, you know, like you said, you know, you have a number two overall pick. You know, he did what they wanted him to do. Uh, so you really can't argue with what he did. You know, he was a key piece in the Hurricanes raising that Stanley Cup banner. So, yeah, uh, no no complaint from me there with Eric Stahl at number three. And it will be interesting to see uh, just how much longer he goes. Uh, he's obviously been to two more Stanley Cup finals uh, with Montreal and now Florida, respectively. Uh, and you know, see you know, what he does in terms of continuing his career. Uh, does he go ahead and call it? Because uh, he's obviously not a spring chicken a- anymore. And you know, it, you know, I've seen this debate you know, for the past couple of years of, you know, is Eric Stahl a Hall of Famer? You know, folks, you know, will list off his super long list of accolades and yet you know, case can definitely be made. Uh, for that, uh, for sure. So, you know, if you, you know, draft number two overall player and he ends up going in the Hall of Fame, I, I think you did something right there, you know? And, and just the fact that there's this debate around is he is he going in? Is he not going to go in? You know, just, you know, we'll see what happens. I do think, you know, he's probably going to be guaranteed a spot in the at least the Hurricanes Hall of Fame for sure uh, whenever 
everything is all said and done. So now moving on to number two, Andrew, who do you have as your number two? Uh, for me, it's Sebastian Ajo. I mean, you factor in value with this one as well. The Hurricanes got him second overall at number 35 in the 2015 draft. And it was funny. You remember after that draft, a lot of people actually called that pick a reach. But, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you just look at what he's done. He started his career on the wing. He's blossomed into the number one center that the Hurricanes needed for years. Uh, second in goals, 218. Second in points, 468. He's, um, or excuse me, third in points. He's just, he's like five behind Rod Brindamore right now. He's their leader in goals, assists, and points in the playoffs. He's played a massive role in the Hurricanes give, getting back to the playoffs, becoming a consistent playoff team, becoming a cup contender. Um, getting getting a guy like that, a franchise center, uh, you know, your best forward, one of the best forwards in the NHL in the second round is tremendous value. He has more than outplayed his draft slot already, and he's a, probably about to get paid pretty handsomely for it this summer when the Hurricanes sign him to a long-term extension. Yeah, I agree. I have Sebastian Ajo as my number two as well. And that was what uh, gave him the edge over Eric Stahl for me was that value. Uh, You know, like you said, you know, when he was drafted in the second round, number 35 overall, people calling that a reach. And and now you look at when folks do the redrafts, he's, you know, way, way up there in the first round, you know, Uh, and yeah, it's great to see, you know, just how, you know, he's been able to develop and, you know, become that franchise player that the Hurricanes needed. And now they actually, you know, have multiple franchise players. You know, we've already mentioned Andre Svechnikov. Uh, and, you know, he's a franchise player as well for them. We're going to talk about another one here in a second uh, as well. And, yeah, Sebastian, he's done way more than was ever uh expected of him and i think that he you know is a guy you know he's obviously in this coming season he's gonna pass rod brendamore in points of course take that number two spot and you know before you know it uh yeah he's gonna be passing eric stall who we just talked about uh for first overall in, in points you know he's done uh everything and more of what the hurricanes could ask but for number one I know we're going to agree on this one, Andrew. Uh, so let's just go ahead and say it on three, one, two, three. Jacob, Jacob Slavin. Slavin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's Jacob Slavin. <laughs> yeah. He is. Uh, oh, man. What can you say about Jacob Slavin? He is a phenomenal defenseman. Uh, he is one of the best defensemen in the NHL. He is the best defensive defenseman in the NHL. And we talked about it uh, a lot you know, this season, uh, especially in the playoffs. When he wasn't on the ice, there is a difference. Uh, and, you know, you can tell that he is not out there. You know, when, you know, Ajo and Svetch, you know, and other guys weren't out there, it, like with Svetch, you, know, you could tell there was a hole, uh, but that was not a big of hole as uh, when Jacob Slavin is out. And yeah, he is the best Hurricanes draft pick, uh, in my opinion. In, in our opinion, he has done everything and, and more. And uh, he's going to be a guy with his, he's not going to be on the Hall of Fame banner. His number is going to be retired in my opinion, when everything is all said and done for him. Yeah, especially if, you know, his contract is up in two years. He's got to be maybe priority one for the Hurricanes in terms of extensions. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. You know, I called him the the Hurricanes team MVP for this season Mm -hmm. um, and maybe for, you know, even for this run of making the playoffs. um, You know, he's a true number one defenseman, just – the, like you said, the best pure defensive defenseman in the NHL, just with the way that he can just shut down opposing teams, top players with his skating, his ability to break plays up with his stick, his, you know, just be in the right position. He's underrated offensively. He's mm-hmm. second in goals among Hurricanes defensemen all time uh, to Justin Falk. He's second in points. If he has 
14 points this next season. He'll be number one all time among Hurricanes defensemen. That's good. So, yeah, I mean, to get a true number one defenseman, a franchise defenseman, probably your best defenseman in franchise history in the fourth round, which funny thing about that fourth round pick in free agency that year, going into the 2011, 12 season, the hurricane signed Alexei Ponikarovsky as a free agent, you know, to add some goal scoring, I think with Eric Cole leaving didn't end up working out. They trade him to the devils for a fourth round pick near the trade deadline that year, that fourth round pick became Jacob Slavin. So just just in, incredible, incredible value found by the Hurricanes front office, led by the time at led at the time by Jim Rutherford, and then obviously a lot of other different people along mm-hmm. the way have gone have gone into developing him into the player that he is today. Yeah, and, and that's you know just a testament to you know the Hurricanes and just how good they can be at developing young talent, uh, and. You know, now, you know, like you're saying, you're just what he brings to the table on the ice. But, you know, he's also, you know, a key piece in the Hurricanes leadership group as well. He's a guy that, you know, I think you very well, you know, I mean, we'll obviously see what happens. Anything can happen. You know, it's in the future, but you know, could very well wear the C when Jordan Stahl decides to hang it up as well. You know, he, you know, like you said, you get you know, your franchise defenseman, a guy that's going to go down as the best defenseman in franchise history in the fourth round, a guy that could potentially be a future captain of this team, a guy that is going to have his number retired. And you get all that in the fourth round. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. The value there is, you know, insane. That's clearly far and away the best value pick in hurricane's history and it's one i don't know if it if it will ever be topped yeah i mean i'm I, it would take a lot to top getting a number one defenseman in the fourth round I'm, I'm not sure it can be done i mean i'm sure it could be done it's pretty unlikely though yeah it, it's something that could be done uh but we want to know what y'all's uh best uh, Hurricanes draft picks are of all time. Again, yeah, we did uh, have our honorable mentions, and we'll run through those one more time. Uh, you know, Andrews were Cam Ward, Brett Pesci, Jeff Skinner, Andre Sveshnikov, Martin Natchez. Mine were Eric Cole, Andre Sveshnikov, and Justin Falk. All guys that are worth a mention again. For me, Andre Sveshnikov, he very well could have been in the top five. I just uh, gave that edge over to Brett Pesci simply because of experience. Plain Brett and simple. Pesci was in my top five. I had Justin Falk as an honorable mention. Yes. Uh, but, you know, all those guys were worth mentioning here as well. And, of course, you know, we may have overlooked someone as well. There's been a, a lot of Hurricanes draft picks over the years. Uh, and we obviously stuck to, you know, just Hurricanes, not Hurricanes and Whalers. Uh, but let us know what y'all's uh, best Hurricanes draft picks are of all time. You know, tweet at us on Twitter at LO underscore Hurricanes. Myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. Andrew at a schnitt. 53 with his honorable mention jeff skinner shout out there uh i hadn't done that in a while i had to throw it in there yeah, uh had to throw and, it in today. you know leave a comment on youtube as well and we will talk to you guys in the next episode where we go with the worst hurricanes draft picks of all time that's gonna be fun uh i know we've already talked a little bit about this and we're going to have uh a lot of debate on that one so that'll be fun And we will do that in the next episode. And as always, let's go Canes.